Hi everyone, Maria here from the Editor X team. Uh, welcome to the very first session in our series on site structure. Um, we're just going to give folks a couple of minutes to come into the session. Um, so just get comfy, get yourself a glass of water, a cup of tea. Um, hope you're all having a great week so far. Really happy to see lots of people coming in there. Um, we're super chat if you'd like to. And in just a minute, I'll give you a quick overview of what we'll be covering in the next hour. Welcome everybody. Oh, lots of people coming in now. <laughs> lots of early folks arriving, which is great to see. Welcome again. Okay, great. If we could just move to the next slide, I'll just quickly give you an overview of what we'll be covering in this session. So we'll start with a little bit about the series itself, all about how it'll help you learn how to structure responsive sites on Editor X. Then we'll talk about all of the layouting tools in a little bit of detail, all of them that are available on Editor X. And after that, we'll dive into the grid specifically and how you can use that. We'll also be talking about some recent updates we made uh, to the grid experience across Editor X and what they mean for your web creation process and how they can help you uh, in your designs. And then we'll show you two demos. So first we'll show you how to use grid with a structure to design approach. And then we'll show you how to use grid with a design to structure approach. Um, then we'll finish up with Q&A with the time remaining. So feel free to ask questions in the chat as well. Um, and we'll try and get to as many as we possibly can. <laughs> and thanks to everybody who sent us in a question beforehand. Um, this webinar will also be recorded. So we'll send it out to you just as soon as we can after the session is finished. Um, so like I said, uh, thank you again to everybody for joining us and we look forward to our presenter, uh, our really super talented product manager, Liron. So without any further ado, over to you. Thanks, Maria. And hi, everyone. And I'm very happy to be here today and uh, present the powerful grid tool for creating responsive sites on Editor X. And, but uh, let's start with a quick overview on site structure and its importance on your site responsiveness. Uh, okay. So as you can see, I have uh, this site here. Uh, and uh, responsive uh, web design is actually about creating sites that look good on all screen size. Uh, that means that a responsive site that is built with the right structure uh, will uh, automatically adjust for different, different screen sizes. So as you can see, when I shrink here my, my screen, the elements uh, adjusted to my screen size and repositioned and resized to, to fit the screen. Uh, I have another example here of a, a site that has no structure for it. And when I will shrink it, when I will shrink my browser, you will see that the elements here are overlapping. Uh, we also have some uh, text here that uh, overflow the page, so it creates this annoying horizontal scroll. And in general, it's not what I'm looking for, right? It's not a good site. Uh, and uh, now I will show you how to use uh, Editor X to create the, the right structure and, and uh, to create a responsive and advanced sites with it. And uh, so let's get to it. So uh, Editor X sites are uh, built with pages and uh, each page has sections in it. Uh, each, in each section, you can have uh, containers and inside contain containers, you can place elements like shapes and text and images and anything you want to present in your site in general. And you can have even containers and in those, in those containers, you can uh, place more elements uh, so we can say that uh, containers and sections are basically a boxes, a boxes that can contain elements. Uh, and the site structure is, uh, is actually a hierarchy of those sections and containers. Uh, placing uh, your elements correctly will make sure that your site will be built with the right structure and will look good on any, on any screen size, right? So uh, the first and the most basic tool that we have is the container. And the container makes sure that the elements in it are positioned together. And when I shrink my, my canvas, you can see that the position of them is remain the same and they are looking good. Um, the containers are uh, very, very good when you want to have uh, um, 
uh, standalone uh, compositions that you want them to look good, look good on uh, any screen size. And let's move to the next one, the stack. Okay. Uh, the stack uh, is a container that holds elements placed in a vertical layout. And uh, stacking like that, make sure that uh, the margins between uh, the elements will remain the same. So if I will shrink my canvas here, you can see that the elements always keep the same distance between them. Even when the text is wrapping here, it pushes down uh, all the other uh, elements in my canvas. And I'll just show you quickly what happens if I will unstack that. You see, now when I when I resize my canvas, the elements just move randomly around, they overlap each other, and it's not very, very nice. Uh, using the stack will help you to avoid, avoid those cases. So anytime you have a vertical layout of elements placed one above the other, you can use stack. Uh, it's a very, very, um, it's a very, very useful tool and I use it a lot. I hope you will use it too. And, okay, let's move to the next one. Next one is the layouter. And, okay, layouter is actually a container with containers in it. Inside those containers, you can place any type of content that you want. You can place images, texts, anything you want. Um, the biggest advantage of the layouter is that he knows how to wrap and adjust himself to any screen size. So as you can see, when the item has no space, they just wrap and create new rows. And this way they behave responsibly and uh, fit any screen size I have. Uh, another advantage of the layouter is that I can have a various of layout type for it. So if I will click here, okay, you can see that we have a lot of options. And if I will choose a slider, for example, I can have a slider on my tablet breakpoint and still my gallery will remain the same here on the desktop. And I think that the layouter is a great tool when you want to create those galleries of elements or even when you want to make small things like wrapping tags and, and things that, that behave uh, responsibly automatically, the layouter is your tool. And um, okay, let's move on to the next one. Repeater. Cool. So, like the layouter, the repeater is also a responsive uh, layout tool. That means that he, he also knows how to wrap. And the layouter, the repeater, sorry, it also has a, a various of layout types that you can use on each breakpoint. Uh, the repeater is uh, very, very good when you have a list of items that share the same design and layout, but have a uh, different content in them. Like this example, you can use it for to present your team or to present uh, products or uh, I don't know testimonials, uh, services, anything that is a list of things that should repeat in your site. Uh, you can also connect it to your database, and then it will automatically present all your items uh, and you just need to edit it once. You need you create one design, one layout, and it will repeat to all of your items. And uh, so the repeater is a very, very powerful uh, tool that I would really recommend uh, you to use. Uh, okay, and the last one here is the grid. Okay, grid is based on columns and rows. So when I use grid, I can span elements on multiple cells like this image here, you see, span on two rows. Uh, the grid is also responsive. Uh, you see that uh, when I shrink my, my uh, section, the elements uh, adjust to the, to the grid. And, even, uh, and the difference between grid and louder and repeater is that grid should be adjusted per breakpoint, but for grid, uh, the the biggest advantage is that you can set a completely different layout for each breakpoint. So as you can see here, I moved my elements and I changed my, my grid cells. And on mobile, I even created a completely different layout. So you can uh, use uh, any amount of cells that you want for each breakpoint and you can place your content in any way that you want. So the grid is, is very, very good when you want to create complex uh, layouts or layouts that look different on any uh, breakpoint. Tool is uh, the grid is your tool. 
Um, and now I'm going to show you how uh, to build a section with the grid. Uh, and I have to say that we talked to many uh, of users and we collected the, your feedback and we, we improved the grid experience uh, to make it much more intuitive and more easy to use. And now I will also show you uh, the new features that we just recently released for you. And uh, so let's start and move to the page. Okay. So we are going to create uh, this first section here. Okay. Uh, and uh, for the first section, we uh, uh, usually when we recommend you, when you start working on a section, start with the grid first, start with the structure and then place the content in it. So here you can see that I have a blank section and I can place the grid on it. Uh, in this case, I need three columns and two rows, right? So let's do it. Uh, first, I wanna show you a new thing. Here in the floating panel, you can see this new dropdown. It has all the grid layouts here. Uh, now any container or section are actually, is actually a one-on-one -on -one grid. So all you need to do is just set a different layout for the grid, just adjust it. If you don't find the layout that you need here, you can click other. In our case, we need uh, three columns and two rows. Cool. And you can also switch the layout here from the inspector. This is also very, very new, uh, the display category. From here, you can also switch uh, the layout of the grid, and you can also use those uh, uh, to add columns, to add rows. You can select a column. You see also that when I hover those, I can see uh, the, the indications on the stage to know which column I'm editing. I can right click on it to add more columns or to delete a column, and I can use this drop down uh, to change the units. And in this case, by the way, FR is um, a unit that is uh, uh, about ratios, it's using ratios to define the, the width of the column. So if I will uh, change this column to be 2FR, it will be uh, twice bigger as the other two, the first two columns. And I think this is what I need in this case. You see, I have uh, this, this image is bigger than these two. So, that's what we need here. This is good. Uh, and another thing that you can edit from here is the gaps. So uh, I will add gaps. I need the, in this case, I need horizontal gaps to have those spaces between my images, right? So I just type, uh, let's say 15 pixels. Yeah, looking good. Okay, now my grid is ready so I can uh, start and place my content in it. Okay, so let's start. Uh, let's add my title from here. Um, my media is here, so I can add this image. I and this one, and also this one here. Just move it to the class. Cool. Okay, I will just stretch this image here, and you can see I can use here the the grid area in the inspector can help me. Uh, place my content in my grid. So I will just hold shift and spend this image on the these two rows. And uh, for those images, I, I want them to scale proportionally when I resize my canvas. I will show you that you see when I, they keep the same proportions when I resize my screen. So uh, I want it to behave the same. So what I'm going to do now is just make sure they have the same ratio. So let's say 200 feet here and 200 feet here. And also for this one, let's say 150 and 150. I want them to be uh, perfect rectangles. So, and then I switch to fluid and make sure they set to scale proportionally here to make sure they keep the same proportions when I resize my screen and set it to 100% because I want it to fill my column. Remind it quickly. Let's do the same here and set it to 100%. Okay, nice. Now I just need uh, to position uh, the text maybe here. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I think I got it. Okay, it's responsive. You see, now it looks very, very good. 
Uh, I will just add some paddings because I need uh, spaces um, around it. Maybe let's say 20 pixels and maybe let's add um, 40 for the top. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and now I will just uh, edit this column. I wanted the, uh, to have a smaller mean height to make sure I don't have a gap. Uh, below it, let's say 100 pixels will be uh, fine. And I will also make sure that I remove my section's mean height because I want the grid to control the section height and I don't want to have a, another mean height there that create gaps on the bottom of it. So I just set it to none and this is it. Now let's see. Okay, cool. Very nice. Okay. Um, another cool thing that he, uh, that we uh, recently added is uh, those read indications here. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with EditorX, you probably noticed that the advanced mode is um, disappeared. <laughs> so, because now you can edit your read from the inspector. And as you saw, when I clicked on the read measurements here, it opened the inspector and focused me on the column or on the row that I need to edit. That will help you uh, to work very fast and uh, to create like a consistent workflow. Uh, and uh, just clicking those uh, those uh, indications can help you uh, work more efficiently. You can also use them to add columns or to add rows between your rows if you want to. Uh, and if uh, you don't want to see them because they interact, you can always uh, turn them on and off from here from the view menu or to use the keyboard shortcut, which is command shift. G to show and hide them. And okay, so now I think we are ready to adjust our tablet uh, breakpoint. So let's move to tablet and let's see how it looks here. So I will resize it. Okay, so I see that on tablet we need three rows and two columns, right? So let's do it. And uh, you can, uh, you can, ch I can change the grid from here from the same, the same way I did before from the drop down, but I want to show you another way. Now I will just remove uh, the third column from here from the inspector panel and I will add a new row from here. I'll move my image to be on the last row here. Let's stretch it. And I need to make sure my columns are equal. Remember what I told you about the file? So if I will set this column to be FR again, they will be equal. So I have two equal rows. Now I will just make sure my image fit here. Nice. And uh, I think it's not ready yet, right? Because we need to, um, we need this image to be bigger. And I think this one should be smaller. So let's do it. Uh, I will, Reduce this uh, row mean height to 200 pixels. I think it will work. I also will spend, I need the text to be in one row and align to the center. And let's enlarge this last row to be 400 pixels. Let's see. I think that's good. And uh, vertical margin, vertical gaps, sorry. Vertical gaps will create a spacing here. Voila. And as you can see now, my section look good on desktop and also on tablet. Nice, right? Okay. Now we can uh, move to mobile. Let's see how it's supposed to look on mobile. Okay, on mobile version, I see that I see that we need uh, rows. We have one, two, three, four rows. Okay, that should be easy. So. I select the section and now I think I will use the drop down for that. So in the drop down, I can uh, adjust the grid to be one on six rows. Nice. You saw it was so quickly, just one click and it adjusted to mobile. And now I will. Uh, I need to remove those empty rows, uh, right? I have two more rows. So I can also, by the way, right click on grid lines to delete them. So that's what I'm going to do. I will delete this one and stretch the image to fill the entire row here. And I will delete also the last one. And I will reduce the mean height of the row 100 pixels. So it won't be bigger than my content as you saw. And 
this is it. My section is fully responsive. Okay, cool. So as you saw here in this, in this uh, demo, any change that I did for the grid applied also on my content. If I will uh, move the grid lines from the stage or if I will change it from the inspector, uh, the content is always related to the grid, so it moves with it. And uh, now I want to show you a new tool that we created for other cases. Sometimes uh, you have, you see this section, this section has no structure in it. Sometimes you just want to start from the content. You place everything uh, in, in the right place you want it. You design your section, and then you realize you need to place a grid on that. Uh, sometimes if you, uh, for example, if you import a Figma file to Editor X, uh, it's a static design. It has no structure to it. So you have to add the grid on top of your content. Uh, for those cases, we created a very good tool. Uh, I just show you that if I want to use grid and shrink the section, you see it become very narrow. I don't like it on mobile and I need the grid to be able to adjust it on mobile. So now I will show you how. Okay, here next to the layout dropdown, you can see that I have a new button, customize grid on canvas. I like to call it the slicer. When I click on it, I enter into a mode. In this mode, I can drag and add grid lines from the top or the left side of my section, as you can see like that. And you, you, uh, as you can see, we, you have also those snaps that helps me, help me place the grid line precisely on my content, on my image. Uh, you can add and remove as many grid lines as you want. As you can see, when I move them around and edit them, nothing moves. The content is freezed. I can do whatever I want and it won't interrupt, interrupt my uh, design at all. Um, I can also uh, delete grid lines with the, by right clicking on them. Or if you want, you can also just drag them out like that. And uh, so this is a really cool tool. I really like it and I hope you will like it too. We will be, be very happy to hear your feedback, by the way, if you want to share it with us. And um, so now when clicking done, uh, I have my grid ready. Uh, I can leave the mode and now I will move to mobile and all I have to do is just adjust my grid in one click. Uh, and let's set uh, this mean height to be a bit bigger the first row, because I want the image to be a little bit bigger. Uh, maybe let's add some gaps also here, maybe 20 pixels. And this is it. As you can see now, my section look good on any screen size. And it took me like two seconds to place the grid on top of it. So Leon, um, could you just show us that one more time, please? I think there was a little bit of lag or something, but uh, uh -huh. maybe you could just do it one more time. <laughs> Yeah, sure. The entire thing? Um, I think just mobile. Just mobile. Okay, sure. No problem. Let's just remove the overrides. Cool. So this grid looks very bad right here. So what all I did was just clicking using the 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 layout uh, drop down here to rotate it to have to be two rows instead of two columns. And then it it looked almost good, right? It was just one click. And, and now I will click on this row to increase it. I want it to be a bit bigger, maybe 400 pixels or even, yeah, maybe 300 look good, yeah. And, and I will also use gaps. I need vertical gaps, maybe 20 pixels here. And this is it. Uh, my section is ready. So now it looks good on any screen size. Um, okay, and now let's see what we covered. So what we covered today. Today, uh, we saw the importance of site structure and uh, how uh, it affected your site responsiveness and why it's so important. And uh, we saw the grid and how powerful it is and uh, how it can help you to control your design uh, on different screen sizes. Uh, I showed you how to add the grid, how to manage it, and how to uh, do it in two different ways. One with the structure first, placing the grid, and then adding the content to it. 
Uh, and the second one was uh, with the content first, I placed everything on my section and then I adjusted the grid on top of it. Uh, and also we uh, introduced some uh, the new features that we just recently released, like the layout dropdown and the inspector uh, category to help you uh, edit and manage your grid very quickly from the inspector panel. Uh, the grid measurements uh, and uh, the slicer, the customized grid and canvas tool uh, to help you create grids very, very quick and very, very uh, precisely. Uh, and I think this is it. If you have any questions, Maria? Oh, we have lots of questions. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so thank you so much, first of all. I think that was really fascinating. And I think everybody will agree with me that it was super informative. <laughs> Um, so the first one I can see here is that uh, we got a, some of these beforehand and we'll answer some that were asked in the Q&A box as well. Um, the first is, where can I find lots of grid templates? So inspiration, I guess, for using the grid. Okay, that's a good question. I'll show you in the editor. Uh, so in the Ed panel, uh, there is a section of compositions. Uh, the compositions are uh, predefined uh, sections. They have all various of uh, uh, layout tools that Editor X offers. They have a lot of grids in them, but also layouters and repeaters and stacks and everything that I showed you at the beginning of the, of the webinar. And you can find many inspirations here and many ways uh, to build very, very nice uh, sections. So uh, you can definitely use it just for inspirations on, or even just use it and replace the content to your content. Uh, they are built very, very good, and uh, I recommend using them. And another way to go is to use templates. We have, uh, you don't have to start from a blank template. You can use uh, our uh, predefined templates and just see how the grids built there. Uh, and then you can replace your content on just learn and build it yourself uh, any way you want it. So. Yeah, I think that's a great way to go about it. You can see how the pros do it and then <laughs> reverse yeah, engineer it. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Cool. Um, here's another one. Um, when would you say it's best to use a stack and when is it better to use a container? Okay, good question. Uh, okay, so stack, make sure your elements uh, remain in the same vertical layout. So if you have elements that you want uh, to be placed in a vertical layout across breakpoints, I really recommend using the stack because uh, it always makes sure that vertical layout look good. As I showed you before, it push everything down. So uh, you know that nothing will ever overlap. But if you want to create more complicated layouts, if you want, for example, in this case, to have a horizontal layout for the, the mobile breakpoint, then you can use the container. And as we said before, the container is based on grid. And with grid, you can create any layout that you want for each breakpoint. So if you if that's this is the case, I recommend using container. Again, if you want, if you need one vertical layout, use the stack. Make sense? Yeah, so stack for vertical container for horizontal. Yeah, exactly. Great. Um, <laughs> cool. Uh, a couple of questions about gaps as well. Um, when I use grids, sometimes I see a gap between sections. How, how do you avoid that? Oh, OK, that's a good question. Um, I will let me show you maybe. Let's take a look on that example. Um, so Sometimes uh, there is a conflict between the section's height and the grid height. How can it happen? When you, as you saw in the demo, I, I uh, removed the mid height of my section. I did it to avoid a case where I have a big, um, big height for the mean height for the section. Uh, let's say, let's take it even bigger, sorry. Let's say I find it, okay. So as you can see here, I have this gap at the bottom, right? Because um, my my rows are set to minimum 300 or something and minimum 400 and something, and 800 is bigger than that. To avoid those cases, you can go in two ways. You can choose first one, if you want uh, the grid to define your section height, just remove the mean height and set make sure the height of the section is set to bottom. Uh, this way, the, the content, the sorry, the section will always uh, be aligned to the grid size. If you want uh, to go the other way, if you want 
uh, um, the grid to be defined by the section, you can use uh, relative units as I showed you before, for example, uh, the FR. So I can change uh, the, the, grow, the height of, the, of my row to FR and it will fit uh, the entire section. So uh, I guess that's, yeah, that's the uh, two ways to go. I always prefer uh, to uh, to define the section by the grid. So I always set uh, the mean height to none when I finish to organize everything. And as you can see, the, the, the section uh, shrinks to my content and it will always makes sure that it will look good, so. Amazing. I love when you do your sound effect for that. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Cool. And like similarly, uh, somebody asks, can you fill in the gaps of their colored like borders in between the items? Hmm. Um, yeah, so maybe there's a way to do it. You can. Um, the gaps are uh, transparent. They show the background of the sections. So if you want to color them, you can actually color the background of your section. And here I have a media. Let's remove it just for the example. If I will uh, make it, let's say black, and I will add, let's add uh, another container here just to hide it. Yeah, so you see the gaps looks like, they, it looks like they have a, a, um, a black background color, but it's actually the section behind it. Uh, so this is a, a nice way to do it, to use uh, uh, the gaps and to, to use the background of the section and to color your gaps. Um, I think the dreaded Google alert. <laughs> 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 sure, be fine. Uh, cool, so we have a few more questions. You're, I'm putting you on the spot, but <laughs> you're doing great. Um, yeah. So uh, can you show again how you made the title fit the full width of the screen? I think that's the, the big title. Yeah, I hope my... my... If the internet oh, works. <laughs> Just reload. Yeah, I'll give it a sec. It happens sometimes. It happens. We can pull down issues. So you want me to show how to spend the, the title of the first section that I did? Yeah, full width of the screen. Problem. Trying to illustrate it with my hands. <laughs> you mean this one, right? Yeah, when it was on, I think it was when you went to tablet. Yeah. So as you can see here on tablet, what I did is actually I just resized it on the, on the canvas, yes. But you can mm -hmm. also use the inspector if you want to be more accurate. Um, I can use I, first. You can see here in the grid area that it span on these two columns on the first row, and you can also use here the units. Uh, Twenty percentages are making sure that it fit. It may, it takes twenty percentages of these two rows. Uh, so this way you can make sure the title is always uh, spanned to the entire row. Brilliant. Um, here's one we didn't cover. Can you show how to place a video inside a grid? How to place a video? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's very similar to uh, images. And uh, let's go video box. I like this one. Uh, I can drag it into my grid and now I can either stretch it if I want and then it will fill my cell. And this way I can also, if I want, I can use the grid area and I can span it on multiple cells like that, which is really, really cool. Or if you want, you can unstretch it and you can give it a, a relative size. And like I did for these two, uh, two images, you can just, um, let's say, Let's use the, um, you can just set them to be 100% and place them in the right uh, grid area and it will make the, you can do whatever you want, but it's it's just like images, like I showed you, uh, you can stretch them, you can either uh, stretch them on the cell or you can just resize them and uh, place them in uh, any way you want. I can, for example, I want to, I can do it like if I want to be half of the, the cell I can uh, set it to 50 percentages and then just maybe align it like that so now it will always be at the center of my cell so if I will resize that's another way to go if you want 
And so either stretch or use uh, sizing and alignment to place things. And of course, the most important thing is the grid area to yeah. make sure it's always <laughs> yeah, placed in the same cell. Great, that's pretty straightforward. Once you know the images, you can use the video. Great. Yeah. Um, this one is a bit more in depth, I think. Uh, could you explain a bit about when to use a grid versus a layouter? Okay, uh, sure. So a layouter is uh, more of a, it's a one dimensional, uh, let's say tool, it's a horizontal tool. So if, as you can see here, I have those items, I will even open the layers to show you. Those items are containers and each container uh, has different content in it. In the first one, I have a title. In the second one, I have an image. Uh, and I can't uh, change the, the containers per break. And what does it mean? If I have uh, this title here, I can place it on top of the image here. So, and with the grid, I can do that. So uh, I think that the, the, the biggest difference between them is <clears throat> that Lauter uh, is built with containers that knows how to wrap. And as you see before I did, like I, I placed here the, um, uh, I, I made it a slider. That's also a, a difference. They can either wrap or have a different layout for each breakpoint. Uh, we have many layouts here. For example, I can use rows here or any other layout that I wanna, I wanna use. Uh, and the grid is uh, more pixel perfect, let's say. Uh, oops, no, that's the repeater. Wait, what did it? Last one. Uh, with the grid, I can, uh, as I said before, I can span elements on set on uh, multiple rows, like I did here. Uh, and also, I can create completely different uh, layout per breakpoint. With the layouter, I, ha I have to keep the same elements in the same items. I can't repaint them or like attach them to a different items per breakpoint. Uh, with the grid, I have more freedom on the one hand. On the other hand, I need to adjust it per breakpoint. It, it's not uh, automatically responsive like the layouter. Uh, so it's let's say it's a matter of uh, which type of design you need. And I always think of how I want it to look cross breakpoints, how, how I want it to behave responsibly. And then I decide which layout tool I need to use. In general, um, layouters are more good for lists of items or for things that you want to wrap or galleries. And the grid is more good for a uh, pixel perfect uh, layouts and different uh, complex uh, layouts and uh, compositions that you want to create uh, per breakpoint. Uh, and I hope that uh, answers your question. I think that was a really great explanation, actually. <laughs> so thanks so much. Um, okay, I won't, I won't give you as difficult a one this time. Can you just show us how you select the text you want to stack? That wasn't just like super obvious when you did it. Uh -huh, okay, sure. Yeah, so I'll unstack it to show it again. Uh, I select the elements, I multi-select them, uh, holding shift in my keyboard. And once I select them, you see I have the stack option here, and I just click it and stack the elements. And so, yeah, the stack is a tool that you apply after uh, when the content is already in place, and you just want to make sure you keep the same distance between the elements. And yeah, and you can stack images and text together, and you can stack any elements. yeah any uh, any type of elements that are uh, organized in a vertical layout which we learned earlier. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Cool. Um, okay, let's see. Does a grid always fill a section completely or is there a case where a grid is part of a section that has other components? So does no. the grid have to be the full size? Uh, no, I, I agree is actually, it, it's, kind of, it's a property of the section. Uh, so uh, let's see if we will see the hierarchy again. So this section has a grid and in the grid we have uh, not a grid here. Let's go to the grid. Uh, the section has a grid, and inside the grid there are the the elements. Uh, a grid is not a, an element, actually. It's just a property of the section that helps us uh, place the content in it. So even uh, I think this is a container. Yeah. So you see that this container has uh, it has elements in it, but the grid is not one of the, of his elements. So. 
that, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it does make sense, of course. Oh. Okay, fantastic. Um, by the way, folks, if we're not asking your question live, we do have one of our colleagues, Sherry, answering questions at the same time, typing furiously in the background. So uh, you will get an answer to your question one way or another. Um, okay, so we have one here for you, Liron, if you're ready for the next one. Um, could you show once more how to place text over an image and how they interact with each other? Yeah, sure. Um, we have a good example. Yeah, so uh, no, maybe it's not a good example because it's small text. Let's go to the. I'll just create a new one for you. Okay. Um, I'll add an image. Any image, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Yep. With grid uh, behind it, let's do it with grid. Let's say that I want to have uh, a composition of, let's say, uh, three columns, okay? And I want the image to be placed uh, at the center. And I want to have a title on top of it, right? Let's add a title. And I will even, okay. Uh, so to place uh, uh, the title at the center, if we want to set, to place it on top of the image and make it align to the center, right? Probably. So I use those alignments to set them. You can just click them and then they will align everything to the center. And, and as you can see here, my text and my image, they share the same grid area. So uh, when I will resize my screen, you see that the, it always remain, uh, the text is always at the center of the image and it stays relative to it, even when it's wrapped. So uh, when it's wrapping, so it's, this is the way how to do it. Uh, you can do it anywhere. You can place uh, an image in a container and place the title on it. You can do it in a section with a grid like I just did. Um, you can put uh, you can place them inside the layout item or or repeater item. I think the the only tool that uh, doesn't allow you to do that is the stack because the stack again is only vertical layouts. You can't place elements uh, on top of each other and stack them. So uh, I hope that's a good answer. Yeah, they're all <laughs> great answers. You don't have to ask every time. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, great. I, I just wanted to remind everybody that this will be recorded and it'll be sent out to you afterwards. So you don't need to memorize all these answers right now. We'll get it to you as soon as we can afterwards. Um, I'm just checking to see if we have any more questions for you. Um, I think I think that's all the questions that we wanted a oh I just got a notification yep we're done <laughs> okay so uh <laughs> if we didn't answer your question live folks as I mentioned we will get back to you um thank you so much for everybody who is so super engaged thank you so much to Liron for all of those amazing answers the great presentation um if you'd like to you can join us for the rest of uh this series um we'll be posting more details about that on the usual channels so please join us if you're interested in more of the layouting tools available on editor x um in the meantime uh while you wait for the updates about that uh you can check out editorx.com academy for more educational resources there's lots and lots of great info there um and if you come up with a question either this evening or in the future, you can reach out to us at hi at editorx.com and you'll reach us directly. Or uh, you can always share your thoughts at editorxcommunity.com. Um, and that's it from us. I hope you really enjoyed this session and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks, Elaine. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.